Hey everyone, my name is Matthew Mercer. I'm a voice actor and the Dungeon Master for Geek and Sundry's Critical Role, and welcome to my video series with tips and tricks on dungeon mastering or game mastering your own RPG. Today we're talking about NPC creation, one of my favorite topics. <laughs> Things you want to consider when creating NPCs. First and foremost, are they a major or a minor NPC? I mean, if you have a lot of free time on your hands, you can flesh out every person in the world to an extreme degree, but at the same time, that can get a little Ominous. So, you know, when you're thinking of a minor NPC, you want to think of just the basic elements of their character. You want to think of their name, their sex, their race, their class, if any. And they don't have to always be classes from the player's choices. They can be merchant, they can be, you know, butcher, they can be the guy who cleans the bathrooms in the space lodge, you know, like you don't have to be too particular. But note those things. Note their general alignment or morality, um, if they have any political or social affiliations in the world that you've created or you're currently running. Uh, that helps as well if they belong to any guilds. Any major allies or enemies they might have, but you know, you just, all you need is just quick notes in case those come up in conversation. As you get more intense about NPCs and more major ones, you start considering what are their ideals, what are their desires, what are their fears. Um, those are really, really cool driving elements so you can understand where that character exists in your world and when the players have conversations with them, where a lot of their answers would come from. Um, you also want to keep a little note on what their disposition is towards the players. Um, sometimes they'll start indifferent or even hostile, but depending on their actions and how the players interact with them, they can become their friends. Their friends. And you want to make sure that you note that on the side for future use if they ever come back. Um, or if they do something really terrible down the road, that could completely flip the other side. Not friends. Also note their appearance, uh, their equipment, what their special skills and mannerisms may be, uh, especially if they're going to be a recurring NPC. And if they ever decide to fight alongside the party or help them out tremendously to some extent, so you want to know what they're capable of and maybe even hint that to the players through some uh, you know, social encounters, which is kind of fun. If they are planning to go into battle, whether it be as an ally or an enemy, put up a combat sheet that generally lists what abilities they have. Uh, you can definitely make things up on the fly, but I prefer and would recommend having something solid on the side at all times, even if it never comes into play, just in case it does. It's really helpful and you'll be glad you had that as opposed to sweating it last minute going, uh, I th he has some um, laser sword. If you're doing silly voices, like I do, I do a lot of silly voices, a lot of them, it helps keep the psychosis at bay. Keep a note of what type of vocal texture or tone or accent you use for that NPC. So if they come back later, you can quickly reference kind of the ballpark of where you had them. You know, if they had a high shrill voice, if they had a thin reedy voice, if they had a low gravelly voice, if they had uh, you know, a very intense militaristic tone, if they had a particular dialect or accent, just write little notes on the side to that NPC so that you know exactly where to jump in if the players go, oh, we're gonna go visit Timmy this week. And you're like, Timmy, Timmy was nine months ago. I don't remember what Timmy sounds like but they'll remember, they always remember. There were also a lot of really great resources and a lot of source books like the uh, RPG Dungeon Master or Game Master's Guide or any of the source books, uh, the main books. They have really, really great tools usually for creating NPCs that involve personality traits, uh, story hook backstories for them and cool places to branch off and create someone from. So don't be afraid to do some research and uh, don't feel like it's lesser of you to pull from the books. They're there for a reason and they're wonderful resources. One of the most important aspects of a good story, though, is a good villain. And creating a good villain can be many things, but it's something you want to make sure you put enough energy and effort into. For one, not all villains think they're villains. You know, their morality may be skewed and they have their own personal goals, but what they're doing is for their own beliefs and their own, you know, personal interests, and they may see others as the villains of their own story. So, you know, try and flesh out why they're doing the things they are doing and uh, what is the what is the, the driving experiences in their life that gave them this twisted righteousness? What acts have they done in the past that marked them as evil in this world or from the player's perspective? These are cool things to keep in mind going forward. Uh, also, you know, good versus evil, black and white. That can work every now and then, but it's really fun to play in areas of gray. As you will find out or have already, players tend to play in areas of gray no matter how good you make your characters. Weird, sometimes not so good things happen in games and characters spontaneously end up dead and you have to hide bodies. Happens. Often. So, you know, villains also can play in areas of gray. Sometimes a character who starts good can turn evil. A character that starts evil can turn good. Sometimes they just kind of borderline that middle area where the, even the players aren't sure if they're good or evil for a lot of the game. And it's kind of one of those, are they useful in the moment? You know, it's fun to leave those questions up to them and let them make those choices. And you secretly know what the outcome is. <laughs> now, as far as grandiose villains, it's good to choose an archetype. And a really great reference that I pull from is uh, there's a classic D&D book called The Book of Vile Darkness. Uh, the 3.5 one in particular has a wonderful breakdown on deliciously built villains. They have archetypes like the scheming liar, the, the tyrant, the sophisticate, 
uh, the misguided fool, or the monster. You know, these are all different, very great personality types that you can build a great villain off of. The uh, uh, sophisticate, in particular, the one that's very involved in societal, uh, grandiose uh, attention and, and, and uses society to get their means. Uh, and sees themselves as definitely an erudite and above it all type persona is really fun. Versus the monster, which is the straight up murderer, a person that relishes in the death and destruction they cause. You know, the, you can pick from any of these and customize and alter from those bases. But I find that those are five really cool bases to build a villain off of. And then once you've created a cool villain, consider how much power do they wield? Are they solo? Are they just this unbridled force of chaos in the world? Or do they have a network of henchmen and people that work for them that either agree with their cause or at least can be paid enough to go along with it. Is there some sort of long reveal that you can build the character towards something about their history that's either dark or very uh, surprising that you can, you know, later on pepper in clues to as the players progress? You know, these are cool things to discuss as you're building this villain. Uh, and don't be afraid to ever let the villain have a grandiose death, no matter how attached you are. If the players are really smart and really intelligent about it, Sometimes a final encounter may not be as epic as you think, and you don't want to steal that from the players just because they were really clever and really intelligent in how they approached it. Just make sure you give, you give him his Hans Gruber final scream as he falls off the building into all of oblivion. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, we'll have more of these videos available for you to watch on the website, and uh, we'll see you next time.